Hello everyone. Hello and welcome to my video. Um, I'm going to give everyone a few minutes to join us. So hello Donna, Nilla, Melissa, Indigo. Hello. Welcome. Welcome to all my mystics and spiritual seekers out there. So uh, I wanted to touch base with everyone. I hope you're all well today. Uh, where is everyone from? Today we are discussing our gifts. So I also would like to know what gifts do you have? Are you a psychic, um, intuitive, clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient, clairnascent? Are you a medium? <laughs> Hopefully I don't repeat myself. <laughs> um, uh, and so on. There's so many different abilities and gifts out there. So please share where you're from and what your particular gift is. I'd love to hear from you all and to know what bright lights are watching today. So let's see here. Uh, Donna's in the UK. Angie's in Colorado. Welcome. I'm in Idaho for anyone who doesn't know in the USA. <laughs> uh, all right. So we've also got Tina from Australia. Oh yes, please share. The, there's a few few uh, other locations. This is streaming. Okay, so let's see if anyone's told us about their gifts. Uh, Stephanie Schiff, clairvoyant and clairaudient, and from Pennsylvania. Welcome. Nilla says a little of everything. That's fine too. You don't have to say just one. Uh, I myself exercise a number of abilities. I'm primarily clairvoyant. But I do many other things as well. Uh, Andy says, Chris, clairsentient, clairvoyant, started out and am expanding. Well, that's great. I'm so glad to hear about that. Melissa's from upstate New York. So glad to have you all join me today. So again, uh, let us know where you're from and what your spiritual gift is or are, if you have multiple and would like to share. Carla San Juan shares Florida, and she's still figuring out her gifts. Strong intuition. Well, that's excellent. Uh, and do we have any uh, comments on the watch party? Nope, nothing uh, additional as of now. Well, great, excellent. So, and so, so it looks like we have a few people who've joined us, and now I'd like to ask, do your gifts run your life? And what I mean by that is, do you find yourself being intruded upon by other people's emotions, by foreign energies or entities? Uh, do you have problems receiving intrusive messages that, especially if they trouble you or troubling prophetic dreams and so on? In any way, do your gifts make it more difficult or prevent you from being able to uh, do your job or remain in relationships or to engage with the outside world in any way. I'd like to hear your stories and some about what you are experiencing. So uh, we have a comment from Indigo. My family were aware of my gifts from childhood and I had to suppress them, but I appear to have intuitive healing and dreaming gifts. Well, that's great. I'm glad you're rediscovering them. Nilla says, had to send a lot of spirits to the light when I was sick about 2006 because they were really haunting me. I'm sorry to hear about that, but thank you for sharing. Carla says, yes, sensitivity to others' emotions, nightmare dreams. Yes, often uh, dreams, troubling dreams can happen either due to prophetic abilities or to empathy. So we've also heard from Christine from California, who's clairsentient, and Tina says that she can feel other people's emotions and state of being, and sometimes their thoughts. Mm. So a little telepathy. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Uh, let's see, Stephanie 
chairs, I am plagued by low vibrational spirits because I can hear and see them. Unfortunately, that is the case often, being troubled by them because they realize someone notices them. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you for sharing. Uh, not just for me, because I like hearing what you guys are experiencing and going through, but for everyone else watching, there's a sense of solidarity in sharing your stories with each other. You're not alone in this struggle, so thank you. Donna shares, I'm an empath. I have trouble blocking when I'm in a crowd or at work. Still learning, and that's all right. Uh, Nila says, I feel other emotions in my own body. Mm. That's difficult. All right. Uh, we're going to get started in just a moment. I just wanted to check in with all of you and get to know you a bit. Anything else um, in our other locations? Uh, uh, let's see. Christine says, overwhelmed sometimes when I'm in public. And it looks like all we've got going on there. Thanks for sharing, everyone. Yes, definitely. All right, so I think I will continue on. Obviously, people are welcome to still comment, but I'm going to go on. Uh, Indigo does share, I feel emotions that at times I hear people's thoughts. I look at people's photos and I see a monster. So that must be very difficult as well. Andy shares, I feel people like crazy. Empathic, telepathic used to drive me more crazy until I learned more balance. I'm glad you were able to find some of that for yourself. It can be a struggle. Mm -hmm. All right, so again, thank you for sharing. I'm going to go ahead and get started. So basically what I wanted to share with all of you is that your abilities shouldn't run your life. And they don't have to. It doesn't have to be this way. For anyone who doesn't know, my name is Lysander and I am a clairvoyant and energy healer. And I am a master of my abilities. I use my abilities on command every day. And I have learned this discipline through exercises over the years to help me harness and control when I want to use these abilities and how I want to use them. So I've managed to mold them to how I want to experience my abilities They've, and my uh, practices have given me control over my spiritual strengths. I was not always like this. When I started opening and exploring my difficulties, not just at the beginning, but at various points along the way, expanding on my abilities, I encountered a lot of issues, uh, especially with being um, bombarded with other people's feelings, uh, feeling in my, my body, feeling extreme anxiety, depression. It was very difficult to deal with those intrusive thoughts, intrusive imagery, and feeling really kind of burdened by these at different points. Uh, there were points where I had uh, night terrors of, of a variety for years and would see energy or entities with my physical eyes when waking from these terrors, which was extremely terrifying. I am well over my fear of seeing ghosts at this point. <laughs> uh, so that's me. And I see that there are a lot of special people here today, and I am enjoying seeing all the ways that the, the divine is expressing itself through you, through your gifts. And these are gifts. Psychic doesn't have to equal suffering. And I want you to know that you can enjoy your own power for whatever use you see fit, whether you're working with other people and helping them become more connected to their own divinity, or if you're just trying to guide your own life, you can do this. It is possible for you and it's in the palm of your hand. So I want to reassure you that even no matter how out of control you felt, how under oppression by your own abilities you felt, no matter how cursed you felt by your power, it can be a gift and it can enrich your life and really enrich your life and add a whole dimension to your existence that other people won't ever really know or appreciate. And the best part is that you can also share that with others if you choose. So it can be different. 
Every day I work with people who struggle to gain control of their gifts. I want to teach you how to be in control. I can help you reach your potential. I do healing sessions and provide exercises to help you be in control, but we are going to talk more about that in a little bit. Not only about learning about your abilities, but how they are meant to be used. So I'd like to share an exercise with you right now, something that helped me. And there's no fancy title for this exercise. It's more the idea of becoming the observer. So a lot of times when we're engaging our abilities, we internalize the information or energy that we pick up. And the idea with this is that you can observe and derive the information from around you without taking it into yourself. So I would like to, you to try this now. Sometimes in the beginning, I also accompanied this with a little hand gesture, where it's like I take, I sense it and then I push out. So I'm going to project a variety of energetic signatures at you, about six different signatures. And I want you, through whatever psychic modality you practice, to just observe, do a body check, whatever sensations or impressions or information come to you through whatever manner. But the key I want you to focus on is that notice the impression and then let it go. Move on to the next impression. Don't hold on to it. Don't try to figure it out or interpret it right then. Just notice and then notice and then notice and then notice and you're not thinking about or thinking about the prior impression you're just like notice 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 so notice and just let it go notice let it go so i am going to do that in a moment so a moment to focus And I will begin quickly moving through these energy signatures. and let it go. Now bring your attention back here. Let me know how that was for you. It doesn't matter if your impressions were wrong or right. They're your impressions and part of, and uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Ideally, the result is that you feel either neutral or you feel exactly the way you did before the exercise or at best just slightly more intuitively opened up. Because ideally you have not held on to any of the impressions and you haven't kept the energy with you. You allowed it to pass by shifting your attention along with the information. And if you are feeling something, then take a moment to just release water off the duck's back. 
right now. So let's take a look. <clears throat> My throat's a bit dry. Great, Nilla. Uh, I'm so glad she sh shares that she felt the same or neutral. Uh, Andy shares he feels super powerful. Uh, sometimes engaging, that's why I kind of amended that. It's like engaging your abilities, you might kind of feel like, wow, yeah, I'm connected to spirit. So that's also fine. So great. Uh, I'm glad that that seemed to be a helpful exercise. This is actually something you could do on your own. Uh, for example, going around your room or a location or looking at photos and just quickly allowing yourself to notice impressions. Don't try to figure anything out when you're using this just as an exercise. Just practice noticing and letting go. All right, great. Uh, any feedback elsewhere? No? Uh, well, continue to let us know how that was for you if you want to share. No obligation. Uh, so other things that, excuse me, other things I've done to help myself is uh, daily habits such as grounding, practicing clearing and healing on myself or turning to someone I trust to heal and remove things in my energy that might make my abilities more troublesome to use, working on myself. And uh, what's it? shielding, that's the word I was looking for, psychic shielding. Shielding is extremely important. It's something I share about all the time. Keeping yourself in here and everything else and everyone else out there is instrumental to getting yourself some relief. So those are some additional simple things I've done for myself. And it's just kind of getting yourself into good habits. All right, so, is that a note for me? Mm-hmm. Okay, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about developing abilities, because I know some of you have them and some of you want to open them at all or more of them, which is a great thing. You're opening yourself to channeling more of your own divinity and power. However, it can get real messy at times. Uh, abilities aren't a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. Each of you is unique, so there will be some variances for each of you. How to develop an ability. The number one thing is to engage it in the first place. You may need to employ your imagination that's something that really opened the doors for me on a lot of my abilities. It's just, it's a way to sidestep doubt and fear and just kind of pretend like children are so intuitive and natural at this because they haven't learned limitation or you can't do that or that sounds crazy. So something that helped me was telling myself well, if I did know what was going to happen about X, Y, and Z, then the answer would be this, and I would just make something up. And it's similar to the exercise becoming an observer, where you observe impressions and you let them go, <clears throat> to sidestep your intellectual mind, your doubts, and all your own things about this. You just imagine, pretend if you must, if I knew this, then the answer would be blank and just whatever springs to mind. And and uh, kind of zoning in on this takes time. And the fact is, is that your ability will only get better if you continue to use it. It gets stronger and better with use and you learn more about you and the ability, how it works for you, because each of us is different. So just a little perspective about how to go about that. So again, we're all highly individual and that's actually why I would now like to work one-on-one -on -one with you all.
and I want to help you figure out the best path to walk so you can control your gifts. Uh, let's see. Say we should look at some of the comments. I, I was just about to say, hmm, there seems to be some things going on. Melissa says, I did not get any images, but words came to mind. That's totally fine. However, you guys translated that information is great. Uh, Noah says, would like tips when I'm in crowds. Shielding is a must. Really affirming, I'm here. No one else is here. No one can be here. Just me. <laughs> Uh, Christine adds that she felt a sense of forehead pressure during the exercise. Interesting. Well, the third eye is thought to be here, and often we can experience sensations when engaging our ability. So it's very interesting. Uh, let's see. Headphones with music helps. Uh, Noah says about walking in crowds. I'm sure it does. It kind of helps pull your attention in and away from what's going on around you. Uh, Donna shares, can you tell me five abilities besides being an empath? Will knowing help in my enhancing them? Typically knowing what abilities you have can help. We have a lot more power available to us than perhaps we realize. And exploring the gifts you know you do have can open the doors to those other gifts. You can discover what else you can do. All right, so now I would like to ask you some more questions. So get ready to respond. I'd love to hear from you. Um, I want you, but well, primarily I want you to think for yourself. If you could have complete control of your gifts, you use them when you wanted to and how you wanted to use them, they communicated with, your intuition communicated with you the way you wanted it to, when you wanted it to, who would you be? How would that change you as a person? What would that mean to you to be able to do that? And is there anything differently you would do? Anything different about how you would live your life? How would that change your life if you weren't fearful of your ability, if you weren't fearful of the things you sensed? If you knew you were in control of when you saw things and when you didn't and what things you saw, period. If you could tune in and just pick up information that's useful to you then rather than just whoever is intruding on you and feeling like you're being invaded all the time. I know that there's a lot of struggles. If you could sleep at night, what would that do for you? I'd like to know. Uh, some great comments here, people sharing what has worked for them in managing their gifts so far. That's excellent. Feeling like you have a say about how you live your own life is so important, especially when it comes to that spiritual gift in you that is the expression of the divine in you and your connection to spirituality. If you doubt it or fear it or it is kind of brings negative experiences in your life, that can be very difficult and uh, color the way that you connect to your greater purpose. Oh. We, it looks like we have some comments down here. <laughs> I was so busy talking to you guys, I wasn't uh, looking. So uh, Carlos shares, it would mean the world to not be affected by others' energy, to be able, yes, yes. Uh, Melissa says, I would try to help out with very unfortunate situations that are happening around us. Of course, Carla shares to show up authentically, not run over by others' emotions, and so on. Uh, has anyone else shared like what that would mean to them? That's okay. It's mostly questions for you to think about. Well, so with all that in mind, I have just finished developing a program that is designed to help people like you become masters of their destiny. I will walk alongside you and teach you not only how to use your gifts, but how they are meant to be used and to influence the way that your intuition talks to you. So it's always something you can handle. Uh, this program is called Mystic Mastery 
and you can learn more about it on my website, lifesoundclairvoyant.com. Uh, I'd like to tell you about this pro program and how it can change your life and change the way that you engage with spirit and with your own power. So this is an eight week program. For the first three weeks, we would be connecting with each other five days a week for an hour each day. And I would be guiding you through not only what your ability is for, or, you know, to define, define it in my own way, to discuss how it manifests in your life currently, how it's meant to be used, help you really tap into that power and to, and I would conduct energy healings to remove anything that is impeding the expression of that power or that is uh, affecting its expression in a negative way and to allow it to really, to really allow that divinity within you to shine forth to its potential. We would also be discussing any lifestyle changes and the habits, practices, and exercises that I have used for myself to help you really gain that control and that foundation in yourself and real security and being able to engage your power the way you want to. Of course, this will be tailored to your unique circumstance and abilities um, so that you can do what works for you. And that way you can tap into your power, use it when you want to, whether it's just, I only want to use it when I'm working with clients, or I, I would actually like to be able to sense things all the time, but in a way that doesn't mean I have to feel stuff myself. So we can get very nuanced with how your ability functions. It's up to you what you want to experience, what information you want to be able to pick up. I really wanted to do this program because it, I see how wonderful you all are and I experience in my life how wonderful these gifts are and it is frustrating that it's just sort of an accepted idea that being empathic, for example, means being bombarded with other people's feelings, feeling sick having to avoid being outside, having to take all these precautions all the time, feeling like spirit dictates to you, feeling like your abilities are running your life, that they're in control. You should be in control and you can be in control. I want to challenge that idea. It's just accepted that you're not in control. If the universe is speaking through you, it's just like, oh, there's nothing to do about it. Never mind that it's kind of making it so that you can't actually deliver your best at work or be emotionally available to your partner or that you just feel kind of frazzled or physically drained and prone to illness even because your immune system is compromised from the stress um, especially if you're not sleeping so it's just unnecessary so i'm very passionate about connecting you with your power it does not have to be like this so that's the first three weeks the five weeks after that, I connect with you once a week for an hour to check in with you, celebrate your progress, give insight about your experiences so far, and make little adjustments all along the way with the practices we've established for you and adjusting them as you make progress, as you learn about yourself, and as you advance. So that is my program, Mystic Mastery. Again, you can learn about it on my website. So if you're ready to take back control, you have got to check this out. It will change your life and you will not be the same when you come out the other side. So, yes, I should probably look at my phone. <laughs> mm -hmm. I could really, I really can talk more about this. I'm very <laughs> passionate. Um, uh, hold on in a moment. I can have a way of just like talking, 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 talking. So let's actually see what you've said. Oh, doesn't look like I missed too, too much.
trying to like see more on a comment and it's just not clicking. Well, uh, thank you for sharing Indigo. It is, it can be difficult engaging with the world. So there can be a tendency to isolate ourselves mm -hmm. in order to protect ourselves. And sometimes this is just what we need to do. So even learning your ability, you need to learn how to defend your space. Uh, your aura. Let's see it. <laughs> Can you oh, see the rebate Tina then? shares. The past five, five weeks I've been taking care of a friend. It feels to me that he is between parallels. He is timeline jumping in different area, eras every five to 20 minutes. He speaks with others that no one else sees. Visiting past events where the environment to him is, for example, an old child at the home. He cannot see anything but this. Five to 20 minutes after each image, he becomes confused because he returns to the current timeline and cannot understand how he got there. So he's visiting there. This has only been the last five weeks. Wow. So, sorry to hear about that circumstance. That sounds like there's something very unique going on with him. Mm -hmm. And that I'm certain that there's a combination of factors. So unfortunately, that is an extreme case of a person's ability running their life and making it so they can't really live. Spirituality is great. Uh, psychic power, magic power is great. But I'm sure that we can all think of it examples or people we know where engaging in this or the way that it kind of runs their lives has made it so they can't live their lives or either where it's just inconveniences to actually being enormous detrimental obstacles. And that is so unfortunate to me because I know so strongly that it, it can be different. I'm just kind of like taking that in. And it's just an extraordinary story. It is. So yes. Uh, I am reading all the comments, even though I haven't responded to literally everyone, and I'm grateful for all of you sharing with me. Uh, it does, it's meaningful, and it's great that you're sharing with each other. So, yes. There are, huh? I was going to say, <laughs> I love that. We're good. We're good. So yes, that's mostly the thing I want to challenge. You can be in control. And for a lot of you, your abilities are kind of an, our abilities are an extension of us. And it's not just about our abilities, but about many areas of our life. We feel like we aren't in control. We feel like we don't have the agency of choice that we just kind of have to accept whatever's dealt us or whatever happens around us or what other people want and influence us to be. So there's also some integrative elements in my work with you of taking back control of your abilities is also taking back control of you. So if, if you want to exercise more control, you need to connect with your personal agency with your personal choice and really feeling like you deserve to be in control. Uh, we have a comment from Desiree. Since September, I've been feeling as if something is coming with in 2020. I've been told I have many abilities and yet don't know how to uh, go about getting in tune with it. Was told I'm a healer, empathic, and a clear where I have dreams, deja vu, and suddenly happen, I stop. I feel I've done this before. Can you help me understand it? I can. Um, when I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, like yourself, who have abilities, I not only advise, uh, but I conduct intuitive readings, going deep into your energy, and observing the environment around you, and deriving information from various sources spiritually to tell me about your ability, where it's come from, how it expresses itself, how your energy functions, and how the best methods for gaining control of that and channeling that gift. I also conduct energy healings to 
provide clarity to clear out any negativity or attachments or anything at all that is uh, blocking those gifts or influencing them to express themselves in a way that is terrifying or detrimental to you, as well as activating your ability and potential so that it's more available to you to channel and to use and to mold according to your will and desire. Uh, let's see. Now it says that's because the portals are open now. There are a lot of an interesting energetic things going on in the world as well. Mm -hmm. And if any of those things are affecting you or involved in your gifts, you will be told of that as well. Let's see, Indigo. Uh, thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Uh, and I would like to hear from you guys any uh, more about your experiences with your ability so far, uh, any questions you may have. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. We're here to talk about you and the divinity that you express. So if you only take one thing away from this video, just the idea that your abilities should not be running your life and they don't have to, you should be running your life and you can run your life. Don't accept the status quo that just because you have this connection to the divine, this mysticism that expresses itself through you, that you have to be in a position of servitude to that ability. If that's the only thing you take away with you, just knowing that you can be in control and have it your way, then I'll feel very blessed that I could share that with you today. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Andy, for sharing. Uh, so yes, if you would like to learn more about my program, visit LysandraClairvoyant.com. You've got to check it out. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to check it out. Uh, right now, we have a synopsis giving you a general overview of the program, and we will be sharing more information about it, really cluing you in to the transformation that is available to you in regards to your relationship with the divine, your relationship with your own power, and the divinity that lives and expresses itself through you. So I'm very excited. I, this is the work that I am so excited to do to empower you, especially those of you who are serving others with your gifts. Even if you're just using them for yourself or just exploring them, that's great because you're connecting to spirit. And even just as an example, you will inspire others. Those of you who are using your gifts to assist others, that is a great thing, being a faci facilitator for the divine and connecting with them. I want to help you reach your potential as a mystic, as a psychic, as a healer, to become a capable spiritual practitioner and be able to offer your very best to your friends, your family, your clients. So, let's see. Uh, Nilla asks, could you recommend some way or guide to developing healing abilities? I would actually become familiar with your own energy first. Become familiar with your energy, how it feels, the way it moves through you. Our energy is not stagnant. So begin to notice how it moves through you or where it's still, where it blocks are. Learn about your own energy intimately. Get familiar with it and then begin working on yourself. Uh, basic clearings, shiftings, and then you can start to go in more, moving things, uh, especially because you'll be in a position to correct anything <laughs> if you find you don't like how it feels after. And then when you feel confident in manipulating your own energy, just begin to observe others. Being able to observe a person's energy is very useful. Uh, another approach is to receive information of what it is that needs to be done and then doing it. So there are different approaches to healing as well. There's no one healing ability. Each healer is unique. So know that for yourself as well. 
connecting to yourself will help in that way as well. Anil says, I healed my own body. Well, that's fantastic. So you've gotten through that first part. I would think about what is your method for healing. Do you observe the person's energy and see what's wrong and manipulate accordingly? Or do you just directly receive the information like, do this? <laughs> this is what needs to be done and you just do it without really seeing the energy for yourself. Uh, that would kind of dictate your process and what kind of healing you do. Do you just uh, clear and balance or do you, are you a psychic surgeon going deep in, making deep shifts? It is all divine. It is all needed. All right. Do we have uh, comments in our watch party? Just to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, some people are, are talking to you, which is great. Of course. I'm the mysterious voice in the background. You all know I'm here. Yes, my lovely partner, <laughs> aka the Kitchen Witch. Um, so yes, it's been very important for me to gain control because I live with a very powerful psychic, <laughs> a very powerful witch, a very powerful medium and psychopomp, among many other things. I have had dreams of her past lives. <laughs> uh, learning control has been very important. So she and I actually live in harmony. I don't experience her emotions. Um, I am human, so I emotionally respond, but that's just kind of part of living. I, I'm not always feeling everything she's feeling. We're able to coexist very peacefully and in love, of course. And I'm also not uh, imposing my energy on her. So I feel very blessed to be able to enjoy my abilities the way I want to enjoy them. I've guided my clairvoyance to direct itself towards uh, symbolic and literal imagery that I would find does not require much interpretation. I have directed my intuition to not feel things in my body. It's not my thing. I don't want to feel someone's illness in my body. I don't want to feel their emotions in myself. Uh, sometimes I do and it doesn't bother me. There have been points where I've shut it completely down so I don't feel it in my own body at all. I just get the information. Uh, so it's really up to me at each moment. I've even <laughs> uh, coached my tarot cards to respond and work the way I want them to. So you can have it your way. No, it says, I learned to read my body and nervous systems. That's great. I talked to my body and asked it for help and asked it to tell me what was wrong and it did. Yes, that is excellent. Uh, that kind of questioning, that observing, that thinking, asking for help, asking your body or a spirit or the universe or your intuition to give you information about what you want and how you need that information, how you need that information is so important. You need to direct the intuitive process. You can't just leave it up to whatever it wants to give you. Because either uh, interpretation is half the work of understanding this. Let's see, Andy says, I've been learning to clear and balance and go deep in, getting to the depths of my energetic blocks on my journey. That's also excellent. So you can also learn so much by working with yourself first and understanding your own nuances so it's definitely a process all right so i would like to ask all of you what uh just a little bit so i I can know for myself what was of value today. Uh, let me know what it was you got from this video today or what, like a, pick one thing that really stood out to you that you felt was of the most value to you. So, and also uh, because we're all friends here, uh, what are your plans for the rest of the day? Anything exciting? I am going to uh, work some more. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. I'm also going to get some coffee. Coffee's life. <laughs> uh, so, 
And you have that fancy romantic dinner with me later tonight, don't forget. Oh, I didn't know about this. Oh, you do now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I didn't, you, I've learned about it here in front of you. <laughs> I know, everyone got to see that surprise look on your face. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Uh, Indigo shares, this very moment I am realizing that I do not know how I heal. I don't feel anything. I just know that people around me have been healed by my willing them well except immediate family members where I'm using touch to shift energy so I feel as lumps in various parts of their body. I think energy vampires have been able to feed off of me easily, hence they felt energized and healed around me. Sorry. I'm so sorry to hear that. You do have wonderful gifts. And there's just so much potential in you and everyone watching. I can feel it and I can see it. So it's just like so overwhelming in a good way. And I wish I could like give you that sense. It's a bit hard to articulate at times. You are blessed and you have something special about you. Even though, unfortunately, other people have taken advantage of that. Thank you. We will enjoy our dinner. Uh, thank you, Nilla. Uh, she said she liked the readings and tips. <laughs> and he <laughs> says he likes our love. Oh. I'm glad that our 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 uh, romance is something of value we got <laughs> from the video. <laughs> yeah, it's an impart, important part of developing your gifts and having control. Having two psychics in a relationship is a full-time job if you don't know how to manage yourself. That's all I can say. I had to learn these habits, and she did at her own point in life as well. And at first, you need to be very diligent and focus every day. Eventually, your energy is intelligent. It does learn to respond reflexively as you train yourself to. So, uh, don't worry, you don't have to focus on uh, a through Z steps every single day forever, but you probably will at least for the first two months. Uh, I would like to ask now if there are any final questions. I want to make sure that I've addressed everybody. Your concerns, what's on your mind, anything at all. <laughs> so, yes. Oh, thanks you guys. You're so sweet. <laughs> I enjoy my relationship a lot too. <laughs> <laughs> Funny thing, I do as well. So yes, again, I want to emphasize, uh, I want to communicate to you how special you are. What I see when I look at all of you, so I'm trying to think of how do I communicate that. Sometimes it could be so, uh, one of my challenges is articulating the things I sense. <laughs> so I'm just uh, bringing my words together. Sorry about the pause. So each of you has a soul and it is a little spark of the divine chaos that has spawned everything. You are a shard of the great diamond. You are a thread in a glowing tapestry. and. Each of you has an ancient soul that has been through lifetimes and acquired knowledge, ability, wounds too, but all this power that is natural to you and is an expression of your true self. And for a lot of us, tapping into that power is our first step into really connecting with that eternal self and all that we are, not just who we are this time around. And some of you have such glorious purposes ahead of you. You all do in your own way, but some of you are just so amazing. Those of you who are called to express yourselves are among these people. And I wish that you could see it. So you could have that belief in yourself to know that there's more, that you are connected to higher beings and forces that are looking out for you. You're part of a greater purpose. You have a unique purpose to you, not just your own gifts. And there's just so much potential for you to really um, transform your life, transform who you are completely, and live in happiness, contentment, power. And I still don't feel like that is an adequate description. So 
Uh, before I, I uh, look at your questions, if there are any, <laughs> I'd like to share with you about my program again. Mystic Mastery. It is a eight-week program. The first three weeks, we work intensely together. I will be connecting you for one hour uh, for five days out of each of those weeks. And we will be discussing you, your unique energy, your unique abilities, how they express themselves, nuances of how you function, how they function, what the potential for you is, and how these abilities need to be managed. I will be uh, doing readings for you to give you all this intuitive information from spirit. I will be giving you healings to tap you into your own power, to clear away anything that prevents you from really engaging your authentic divine self. And uh, the five weeks after that, I will be connecting you with you once a week to check in, to celebrate your progress, and to make little adjustments for your growth along the way. So you want to check this out. This is going to change the entire way you relate to your divine self and your power. And you can find that on my sandraclairvoyant.com. All right, let's see if we have any questions. Let's see, uh, Andy asked, can you sense and visually see the spiritual team I've been told and felt around me? I can. However, I will tell you what I perceive around you and if they have any messages for you, I will relay those, especially in concerns to developing your gifts. Uh, any questions? All right. Well, I just want to check in with all of you one more time. Make sure I'm present for you. I always want to be present for you. Because you have all blessed me with your presentness and your divinity. So, love, uh, mm -hmm. how are we doing? Well, you've got, you've got a couple minutes here, and then we're going to need to wrap this up. Uh, all right. Well... Again, know that you are powerful, know that you can take control, and that you can engage your power the way you want to. And this is available to you, and you can discover yourself on your own or with me, and that there is so much available to you. There's so much in you and you don't even know it yet. I'm excited to go on this journey with you. So I'm looking forward to working with all of you and being part of your journey. Uh, Indigo shares, I need to hear that. It is a lonely path. When does the program start? Uh, it's not a set date, it's whenever you decide that you're ready to engage the program. So it is available all the time. <laughs> uh, nuances of scheduling and so on are something we would talk about one-on-one. -on -one. All right, so I would like to thank everyone for joining me today. Uh, thank you so much, so, so much for being here today and being present, for sharing your stories and your gifts with me, sharing about your struggles and what you experienced during this video. I am so honored that you've chosen to spend this time out of your day with me and that I am, uh, I'm really pleased that you decided to invest the time in yourself and learning a little bit about how to, do, how to uh, tap into your power. So you are all wonderful, divine, amazing mystics and I want you to have a wonderful, prosperous, amazing day. Thank you again for being here. You're all amazing. Can be blessed. <laughs>